Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Matt Miller, I'm the president of the WCU Everett Engineering Club. Now in its sixth year, the 2018 Mars Rover team is a dedicated crew of mechanical, electrical, and software engineers with help from communication and hospitality business. This year, we are focused on improving the rover on a task-by-task -task basis, making changes to account for each of its shortcomings that arose during last year's competition. Now let's go check out my favorite place to be, Engineering Labs at WCU Everett. We still manufacture all our own parts, most of which come from this facility. We have access to a CNC router, manual mills and lathes, a variety of 3D printers, CNC foam cutter, and last but not least, CNC mill. This in conjunction with Amtec gives us almost limitless possibilities for our machining capabilities. In the previous year our bins performed as expected, the only downside was when our rover flipped over during the extreme retrieval task. This caused the contents of the bins to fall out and affect our score. Integrating a closed-lid system was a concept that was thought of last year, but never became a reality due to time constraints. This year, we will design lids that remotely close and keep the contents aboard as the rover moves over the terrain. During the competition last year, our soil collection was done by a shovel-like attachment for the arm. This was not the first choice for the soil collection as we had a working prototype for the auger last year. Prior to competition day, the team realized that the auger system would not go deep enough to collect the soil, which was 5 centimeters, due to the plastic framing around the auger not being able to go into the ground as expected. While it worked out in the end, the auger should be fully functional and be more efficient than last year's collection. This year, we plan on utilizing a soil collection bucket driven by a scissor lift to collect the soil below the designated depth of 10 centimeters, which is new this year. Uh, the top layer of soil will be discarded and the dirt underneath will be collected in the soil bin for experimentation. To operate the rover, our pilots must obtain a ham radio license as well as become familiar with the FCC Part 97 rules and regulations. All pilots have taken a training course regarding radio theory, proper operation practices, and regulations associated with receiving and transmitting signals. With the license obtained upon completion of this course, all drivers will spend several hours a week piloting the rover to become fluent in all aspects of operation. The testing platform will also be constructed to prepare for the equipment servicing task. Last year, our rover was only 50 grams below the weight limit. We want to give ourselves a greater buffer for this competition. There are several areas we can cut down on weight without decreasing the structural integrity using carbon fiber. With these changes, we hope to be well under our 50 kilogram weight limit. The rover will be able to drive autonomously in two distinct scenarios. The first scenario will allow for waypoint following set by the battle station. The second will allow for GPS tracking when available. The first scenario will activate if called upon when GPS signal is lost. In addition, an accelerometer and sonar sensors will be added for collision and embarkment detection. If the sonar sensors trip, the rover will stop and manual uh, control will activate via a solid video link. If the accelerometer detects extreme pitch, the rover will reverse direction until a stable angle is achieved. 